Look at the prices, gasoline, real estate, you name it, they are all going up. What's going on here and what's going to happen next? Well, it's going to get much worse, Tucker. You have to remember that inflation really is nothing more than a tax. You know, when the government spends money, they, they need to get the money. The public has to pay for it. Normally, the government would raise taxes and then taxpayers send money to the government. The government spends it. But we just passed a $1.9 trillion stimulus bill. Nobody's taxes got raised, but we don't get all this government for free. What happens is the Federal Reserve prints the money and then the government spends it into circulation. But when that happens, the value of all the money that's already out there goes down. And now the price of everything that you right. want to buy goes up. And that added price is basically the inflation tax. Well, certainly, as you have inflation, you reduce the real value of the debt. But the government has no plan to pay off the debt. I mean, they're repudiating it. But the real problem is the amount of money they're going to have to spend just to finance uh, all their current commitments. Uh, and, and this is a, a massive amount of money printing. It's unprecedented inflation because it's the money supply that is being inflated. And as a result, everything costs more because we're not producing more. It's actually the result, the opposite. Americans are at home. They're not producing goods and services, yet we're creating more money to buy the goods and services that fewer people are producing. More money, fewer goods. Prices are just going to keep going up and they're, they're, it's not going to stop. But I think to everybody that's living in the United States, it's not going to look pretty. And the real problem is the Fed. The Fed pretends that it's transitory. But when they have to admit that it's not transitory, the inflation rate will be far too high for the Fed to do anything about it. Because if the Fed actually raises rates to fight inflation, they'll create a much bigger financial crisis than 2008. And the U.S. government will be forced into insolvency. Peter, gold has been in a downward trend. So is this rebound we saw earlier likely to stick? Well, you know, I have no idea. It wasn't that, you know, impressive a move, uh, considering how much gold has dropped preceding this uh, this move on a Tuesday. A lot of things that were beaten up uh, bounced back today. Look at the move we saw in the tech stocks uh, that had been really getting hammered as rates were rising. So I don't know if we've seen the lows in gold, uh, but I know for sure we haven't seen the highs. So when this correction is over, the price of gold is going much, much higher. Well, rates are going to have to stay low indefinitely because the entire economy is a bubble. I mean, it's not a legitimate recovery that we're enjoying. It's simply the spending of uh, borrowed money and more literally printed money. We're running massive deficits. Uh, the federal government is spending over eight trillion dollars a year, but collecting less than three and a half trillion in in taxes. The difference is pretty much being supplied uh, by the Fed and Americans are spending all this money that's why our trade deficits are skyrocketing right now. So the whole thing that's keeping this house of cards from imploding is 0% interest rates and QE. So the Fed is not going to pull the rug out from under this bubble, but it has to pretend that if it ever sees an inflation problem, that it's got the tools to fight it, even though it's bluffing, because even if it had the tools, it would never use them because the tools would destroy the house of cards that they've erected. But if inflation fears continue to increase, do you see gold and precious metal prices catching up to those expectations? Well, absolutely. See, right now, I think the markets sense that inflation is going to be moving higher uh, and maybe even higher than what the Fed is uh, acknowledging. But I think the markets still believe the Fed, that the Fed will be able to contain the inflation problem before it really runs out of control. So it's the expectation that the Fed's going to fight inflation by raising rates. That's what's pressuring gold. But the markets are wrong. I mean, the Fed is not even going to attempt to fight inflation. It's going to surrender. Inflation is going to win without a fight. And when the markets realize that the Fed is all bark and no bite, and that inflation is going to be an even bigger problem that is going to be uncontrollable, then the bottom is going to fall out of the dollar and gold's going through the roof. Certainly, there are some of the skeptics who are now capitulating, uh, which is something that you might expect uh, in, at the end of a mania. Uh, the early doubters, naysayers, you know, can't help it, and they join the party uh, usually pretty late. Uh, you know, whether or not this party is going to rage for a lot while longer, it's hard to say. I also question some of the uh, legitimacy of some of these uh, Bitcoin converts, because I think some of the people who are now bullish also have vested interests. They've kind of got involved in some crypto related enterprise. And so it's in their financial interest to now be uh, promoting Bitcoin. So whether or not uh, their newfound love for Bitcoin is genuine or not, it's hard to say when there's a lot of money at stake. 
and people are trying to get their piece of the pie uh, before it's gone. So if interest rates go up, we could see a stock market sell off. But the Fed chairman insists easy money policies aren't blowing any bubbles in the stock market. You know, Powell is getting progressively more dovish every time he speaks, which I think is a necessity because the U.S. economy is in need of more artificial support every time he speaks. Because the only thing that the economy has got going for it is the Fed because it's a phony economy. It's not real and it's completely dependent on increasing levels of inflation. So the Fed keeps on printing money while pretending it has no effect on interest rates, no effect on asset prices, and claiming that the market doesn't even need its help. I mean, Powell actually said today that he doesn't even think the Fed's massive bond buying program is having any effect on interest rates. He thinks there's plenty of demand for U.S. Treasuries, and the Treasury doesn't even need the Fed, which, of course, if that were true, then why is the Fed buying all these bonds in the first place? The, 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 the truth is, that's the only thing standing between us and complete economic collapse is the Fed. But the only thing standing between uh, the Fed and collapse is the value of the dollar. And, you know, Powell today said that he doesn't think it matters how much money they print, uh, that there's no longer a relationship between the supply of dollars and the value of those dollars. Well, the laws of supply and demand are still in effect. And if Powell keeps printing dollars, eventually there'll be no demand and the value, the price is going to collapse. And, and that's when it all hits the fan. Elon Musk, yourself and himself, <laughs> don't seem to quite see eye to eye on Bitcoin's future. Well, you know, Musk is, uh, you know, not exactly unbiased here. He purchased one and a half billion dollars worth of Bitcoin for a Tesla shareholder. So, you know, once you own Bitcoin, you're really obligated to talk your book because the only way to prop up the price is to con other people into buying it. But, you know, based on Musk's tweet to me, if he's actually being honest in what he tweeted and not just trying to uh, promote Bitcoin, uh, even though he has more money than almost anybody, he doesn't really understand it, you know, uh, because he said to me that money is just data and it's not. That's not what money is. I mean, data can represent money, but money is a commodity it, like gold and silver. That's money. What we use today, Federal Reserve notes or people that use euros or Japanese yen, those are what you call money substitute. They're not actual money. In fact, when the Federal Reserve issued notes backed by gold and silver, the gold and silver was the money. The notes were currency. And what gave the currency value was the money, the gold, that backed it up. So currency is also a money substitute. But what we have now is a substitute for legitimate currency, and that's fiat currency. The difference between real currency and fiat currency is real currency is backed by actual money, whereas fiat currency is backed by nothing. The dollar is fiat currency. Bitcoin is fiat digital currency, but the problem is it doesn't even function as a currency. So it's really nothing. What Bitcoin really is, is a digital token. And you have people that are collecting Bitcoin and you have people that are trading Bitcoin. So it has a price. But that price is a function of all this speculation. But at the end of the day, uh, these Bitcoin collections are going to have no value because there's nothing unique or scarce about Bitcoin and the price is going to collapse.